Jason Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Holy smokes, it's Thursday on this show, and I didn't know what it meant yesterday. I know what it means today. Ring of Honor, outright sold to Tony Khan. We had been given the impression yesterday that they had purchased the video library. And uh, I had also heard that they had gotten the rights, if they wanted them, to the Ring of Honor name. Uh, turns out, outright sale. And that was the only thing announced yesterday. So if you heard the show, we need to find out what's going on, if anything, with HBO Max. Because, as noted yesterday, I had heard from people involved in AEW and WWE that believed that part of this deal was a deal with HBO Max. As I talked about yesterday, could have been total BS, could have been a game of telephone. But it was very interesting that, uh, that a lot of people were talking about that, including, he didn't say HBO Max, but yesterday Tony Khan was asked about a streaming deal, and uh, he was very positive and bullish on it. They have obviously bought the Ring of Honor video library. Ring of Honor has Honor Club, but uh, my my belief is, as the old saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. But we have to wait, because right now all we know is that Tony Khan has bought a Ring of Honor. So we'll talk about that after the break. And uh, I could not help but laugh at uh, an announcement WWE made today immediately after this. And uh, we've also got notes on WWE ending its business relationship with Russia. We've got the lineup for both nights of WrestleMania thus far. So, again, if you want to buy tickets to one night or the other, I'll tell you what to do. we got NXT ratings and, of course, AW Dynamite recap. Lots to talk about here on the show today. Wrestling Observer Live. Um, so, uh, yesterday, we uh, did our predictions for uh, what the big announcement was. And uh, this is what happened. Tony Khan, the new owner of Ring of Honor. After announcing the acquisition on tonight's episode of Dynamite, a press release was sent out confirming that Khan had purchased the company from Sinclair Broadcast Group. Included in the deal, Ring of Honor's video library, brand assets, intellectual property, production equipment, and more. The press release states the purchase will be completed through, quote, an entity that is wholly owned by Tony Khan. It also said that further details regarding the extent of the acquisition will be announced in the coming weeks. And then we have a big statement here by uh, Tony Khan, who, uh, I don't know if you saw the show last night. Very excited. ROH released all of their wrestlers under contract back in October, went into hiatus following their last pay-per-view final battle in December. Recently, they have been promoting their card for 2022. And uh, that's the story here. So this apparently had been in the works for a couple of weeks. But uh, people could either not talk or they had no idea. There were people involved with Ring of Honor yesterday that were pretty surprised, to say the least. But uh, what's the story here? Well, he has gotten the name. He's gotten the video library. He's got the ability to promote shows if he wants to uh, as Ring of Honor. Um, What he's going to do, I have absolutely no idea. And he hasn't talked about it yet, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. But uh, as I noted in the opening segment, there was no announcement of uh, HBO Max, no announcement of a video library from a non-New Japan uh, wrestling promotion. But uh, I believe, because I've heard from so many people in both companies, I believe that, uh, that something probably is going to happen with AEW and HBO Max. I believe they probably will ultimately do a streaming deal because the fact of the matter is, what are you going to do? There's no wrestler's contracts to pick up. It's not like you bought Ring of Honor, so now you get the Briscoes. It's not like you bought Ring of Honor, so now you get Jonathan Gresham. You could have gotten the Briscoes and Jonathan Gresham two days ago. Nobody's under contract. So what did you buy? You bought a name, intellectual property, and you brought a huge tape library. What are you going to do with this tape library? Are you going to just keep Honor Club going? I mean, I'm sure they will for now. But, I mean, it seems to me that uh, based on the rumors that we had heard, what are you going to do with a non-New Japan Japanese tape library? Air matches on Dynamite from the vault? No. So I believe 
whether it's HBO Max or not, but so many people have mentioned it that I think that's what's happening here. I believe that ultimately there's going to be a deal signed, and it will be like WWE's deal with Peacock. The AEW archive will be available. The Ring of Honor archive will be available. They can now put together tons of specials. Oh, you want to know about Brian Danielson? Where we got all this footage of him in Ring of Honor. They basically did an angle at the beginning of the show. Hey, here's two of the guys in the main event of the first ever Ring of Honor show. They're here now, and they're going to do a match tonight. And Daniels and Danielson had a really good match to open up the show. So I believe that ultimately there's going to be more to come. But at this point, what we do know is that Tony Khan owns everything that still exists when it comes to Ring of Honor. And we shall see what he ends up doing with it. Your thoughts, Mike, and then I'm going to tell you about uh, something funny. Well, what are they doing with their own footage? You know, that's they got a ton of their own footage that is not being streamed anywhere. I mean, it, it's obvious at some point they're going to have streaming of their own, whether that is under the banner of AEW, whatever you call it, or at first, or whether HBO Max is ready to go with this thing and they see that, okay, quarterly, we can actually make some money off of pay-per-views by having people order through this portal and having all this. It, it is, it's obvious that's the direction that they're going because that's the direction that everything has gone. So again, whether it's on its own, whether it is immediately picked up by HBO Max or not, or whatever they decide to do, streaming is obviously going to be a big deal with this. I, it, it's fascinating because what do you do with the promotion? Do you make it a separate company where you share a little bit of talent? Do you make it a separate company that runs two weekends a, a, a month for two days like a lot of the other indies do? And it's a super indie. Is it a developmental territory with a, a sweet video library? Is it something that can fend off predators? You know, your GCWs, your Defies, other things running that weekend. You can have a show where you have a lot of people that are on Elevation and dark that you're looking to give some shine to plus you can bring in alex zane and swerve obviously swerve signed by AEW right now but you know you can have big matches like that if you so choose there is so much that could possibly come from this and there's so much that's just up in the air right now until we have some more uh you know uh, guidance going forward here and who knows what what really they have nailed down as far as this stuff goes obviously the deal has been in motion, but it has gotten done relatively quickly. You have what you have right now, and it's going to be interesting to see going forward here what they decide to do. It is it is fascinating how this could send ripple effects throughout the entire wrestling business. So yesterday, I have a buddy in WWE, and uh, this announcement was made, and he talked about Ring of Honor and buying the intellectual property and the video library and all of this sort of thing and the fans cheering and everything like that. And uh, he sent me a text going, tomorrow, they'll be, WWE's going to be back interested in indie workers again. Well, ironically, it was the exact opposite today. Tony Khan announces that he is purchasing the assets, the video library, etc. for Ring of Honor. And WWE announces they're doing a tryout during WrestleMania week. And it is only open, only open... To college athletes and recently graduated college athletes. They're not allowing any indie workers to come to this tryout. And, of course, they had a women's tryout uh, recently, which is how, uh, coincidentally, Ring of Honor's Rock C got signed to WWE. But, uh, you know, they had like three or four indie women there, and the rest were just all college, whatever, you know, athletes. And uh, I'd heard, like... Dude, next time, they don't want any, any indie workers. And uh, here we are. Got WrestleMania weekend tryouts. 50 male and female participants only with collegiate athletic backgrounds across football, basketball, track and field, wrestling, volleyball, gymnastics, cheer, and dance. So, listen, I'm not saying it's bad because I don't know how things are going to work out in, in five years. I mean, my gut would say, like, if you want to run a wrestling company, we should be looking for wrestlers. But, you know, they've got a different idea here. They want Tiffany Stratton's. And uh, maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. But it is funny that uh, one company is going hard, hard in the direction of professional wrestling. And the other is going hard in the direction of we are sports entertainment. 
We want pretty and or buff athletes. We can teach them to do this wrestling crap. And uh, that's how we're going to uh, build our future. So we'll see. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? I can't predict the future, but we'll see. Oh, boy. Can't wait for all these uh, mega athletes to... <laughs> It's it just, uh, well, it, this is what they've always wanted to be. And, and to have camps like this is a great idea to have people that are pure athletes coming in. It's just this aversion to anybody with any experience or any outside thoughts whatsoever. I guess the thought with Roxy is she's so young, she hasn't been poisoned by anybody else yet. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it, it's just it's we see it on NXT 2.0. It doesn't make for it for me as a fan doesn't make for a good show at all. It doesn't make for people that I want to see and how they go about developing these folks by putting them on TV basically right away. You know, how is this really going to be great for developing your future? You just have to hope that you keep hitting on people like a Braun Breaker or hitting on the Strattons and the D'Angelo's where you hope it's going to pan out. But I don't know. You're going to end up with a lot more Lash Legends and, unfortunately, Amari Miller's right now. That's that's usually how these things go. Dude, we got a lineup for NXT 2.0 Roadblock. With the exception of the Creed Brothers, we've got an NXT Championship match featuring a second-generation pro wrestler against a pro wrestler and a, a pro wrestler. We have got two great pro wrestlers against the Creed's. And then we have Last Man Standing with a pro wrestler versus a guy who was a pro wrestler before NXT 2.0. It's like all their main events, top matches, top feuds all involve pro wrestlers. But they think, we can do this without the pro wrestlers. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We'll get into the Dynamite report here in a little while. But uh, first off, with the ongoing war in Ukraine, I was not expecting to wake up to this today. WWE is ending its business relationships within the country of Russia. WWE issued a statement on Thursday announcing it has terminated its partnership with Russian broadcaster Match. WWE is also shutting down the WWE network in Russia immediately. Termination of the broadcast deal with Match and shutting down the network in the country means there's no longer any access to WWE programming in Russia. The move eliminates access in Russia to any WWE programming, the company says, including the company's weekly Raw, SmackDown, and NXT shows. I'm not going to say anything. It's on-demand library and all of its premium live events, including WrestleMania 38. So no more WWE in Russia for the time being. <laughs> what, a, what, what a bold step for them to take, uh, but still running Saudi Arabia, so... Oh, Vince, and the decisions that are made. You know, he's his, uh, he's selling Pat McAfee on being in Re WrestleMania. Apparently, he's on the uh, the Pat McAfee show today, and he he's making it known to Pat that being Wait, he's in running wrestling, head to head with me. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know what time the show actually begins, but uh, he wanted to let Pat know that wrestling in a match is very different than being a broadcaster. I, I Pat didn't know that by Thanks, wrestling Vince. in NXT already. So yeah. Excellent. Sports entertainment. Johnny Knoxville, Pat McAfee, Vince McMahon, Stone Cold Steve Austin after Vet being retired grizzled, for 20 years. Grizzled veteran worker Vince McMahon. Uh, yes. Tell me who more looks, about working, Vince. Who looks more grizzled right now, Edge or Vince? I'd have to see Vince on the show. I heard he actually looked pretty good. Someone said they did a really good job with whatever they did. <laughs> Lighting and makeup? Whatever they did with Edge. You know what's funny about that Edge? Oh, my God. I mean, it was clearly by design. Like, you know, he didn't go out there thinking he was going to look like, uh, you know, Jungle Boy or anything. But, bro, that guy looked grizzled. So grizzled. He looked so yes. grizzled, I almost dropped an F-bomb on the air right there. But uh, apparently uh, the WWE social media folks, they made a, a short video of all of Edge's grizzled faces that they put on social media. So... I got a lot of respect for the guy. I've done the grizzled thing here and there. If you go back through the archives, I like it. The problem is we both have wives. We'll see how long he looks this grizzled. Anyway, if you're going to WrestleMania, are you thinking about it, but haven't decided yet? And Wait boy, a do they Wait ever? A do they want you to Wait go? A second. Yes. You're, it, it, this really comes down to your wife and, and her preferences because Edge has kind of looked this way. You know, I, I would not be uh, what I would call you know a pretty boy. I would think I, I would look a little bit more grizzled, and, and my wife is fine with it. It just happens to be that your wife does not like a grizzled Brian Alvarez. It depends on the grizzled dude. 
I mean, if it looks like it got pubes, I'm never going to forgive MGF for that. Never. Well, look at me. Yeah, pubes you know, you know uh, what? glued to your when face. It, when MGF said that I had pubes glued to my face and my wife said he's not wrong and I shaved after that, oh, you geez. know, this is this is my uh, moment where, you know, I met CM Punk and then he quit wrestling. Like, I feel the same way about MGF as he feels about CM Punk because of that comment. Well, you deserve that for every fat joke you ever made on all your co-hosts from over I never years. made a fat joke ever. I made observations. Now, listen, <laughs> here's the lineup for night one and night two of WrestleMania. If you want to go to, if you want to see Charlotte versus Ronda, Becky versus Bianca, Ray and Dominic versus The Miz and Logan Paul, and Drew McIntyre and Happy Corbin, you can go to uh, night one, Saturday, April 2nd. If you want to see Lesnar and Reigns, it's going to be a short night, apparently. That's Sunday. Only match announced for that night. And you know all that talk about how you want to go to WrestleMania? If it would have been uh, Drew McIntyre versus Madcap Moss, I'd consider night one. Because I love That's my favorite feud, dude. That is my favorite feud. <laughs> the problem is that uh, the finish they did on SmackDown should have been the WrestleMania finish. That should have been the finish of the show. That was the best finish ever. Oh, loved it. God anyway. bless their souls. Redding Moss is not worth three hours of traffic and lines and all that stuff. Re- is he? Is he really? I don't know. After that finish on SmackDown, if I could have told my children about that someday, I'd have considered it. Now, he is a great example, by the way, even though it took way too long. There's a great example of a great athlete that you want to actually get. Obviously, you want wrestlers. You want guys like the Creed Brothers from the NCAAs. You want people that were big fans of wrestling. At least I would. You would think so. But, like, Riddick Moss is a great example of somebody you take as an athlete that's got enough of an interest in pro wrestling, and you can actually train them up. Unfortunately, it's taken way longer than it should have for a lot of reasons that are complete, have nothing, zero to do with his acumen to learn or his physical conditioning. You know what I'm saying? So, But he's a great example of why you want to actually do those things. I want to uh, take a moment here to uh, to grab my platinum, or was it white gold? Anyway, my ring that I won uh, prediction contest 2021 winner, Brian Alvarez. I'm going to slide it onto my finger right here. Apparently, I got a lot of water in me today. So, <laughs> a Wrestle Ticks here has uh, got the update on WrestleMania night one and night two. And uh, these, I swear to God, are the number of tickets that have been distributed. Night one, 56,076. Night two, 55,781. Who was it that said this show is going to do 55,000 both nights? Who was that? So you're wrong. You're no. wrong. They've already outsold what you said. You said they were going to top out at 55,000. Listen, I'm going to be wrong in the end. But I'm gonna be You're wrong, wrong in the now. end. I'm gonna be. It's fifty-five, 50 bro. It's the it, bro. Come on. Hey, the you point want to split is, hairs, brother. The this point is, is coming back to get you. I will be wrong in the end. But why? Why? Because ticket sales were such that we're bringing back Stone Cold Steve Austin, Vince McMahon in a match, Carmel and Corey claiming they're gonna have sex after their match of the show. Dude, they're pulling out. All of the stops because they're trying to break fifty five thousand, which was like what I exactly what I predicted they were going to do both nights. Because I'm not in the minority, that I'm not interested in going to two straight nights of WrestleMania. If this would have been one night WrestleMania, and granted, listen, they're they're making the right decision for themselves because right now they're at one hundred ten thousand tickets sold as opposed to. You know, if it had been a one-night mania, they would have had, you know, 80,000, 82,000 tickets sold. But they would have done 82,000 tickets, and they wouldn't have had to do all of this stuff. You're right, but here's the the problem with what you're saying, and there are people that are like you, and I'm not, again, I I don't blame anybody for having At that At this point, thought, there's 30,000 people the like money, me. With the money that's put into it, but, but Brian, if they were red hot right now, wouldn't even be a question. If yeah, they that's were my building, point. They're well, not. But that, no, but that's... But, but 
it's a fixable thing that you're again you just said that it's there's more people that's your the crux of your argument on this is there's more people like you and you're right there are a lot of people like you and they would have sold a lot more look 55,000 and 56,000 they probably would have already sold 80,000 or possibly even sold a thing out by now depending on what the prices are but they're not doing that but the bottom line is away from that the biggest problem is they're ice cold with no stars to go see on any night so that is i think far more damning that the fact that they're having to pull all of this crap out and all these people off the bench and they think that this is a great idea this should give them big pause going into next year with los angeles because if they're still doing the same thing i don't care if you got the rock on the show or not run one night because if you're not going to put any effort into it at all again i get what they're doing and I get why they're doing it, and I'm not against them doing it, but if you're not going to put any effort into it at all, I mean, you're going to run into this every single year. Cold product's a cold product, period. And you might get 40,000, 50,000 people each time, but it's still going to look unimpressive. You know, you can't pan back in a 100,000-seat stadium, an 85,000-seat stadium, and you have 50,000. I mean, it looks great, and they'll dress it up and everything. It, that's still not good. You know this is, everybody? You know this WrestleMania two-night thing is? This is a three-hour Raw. I'm going to tell you why. Because they had the opportunity to stay at two hours or go to three hours. And obviously, they were going to make much more money at three hours. So they took the money. And you know what happened when they went to three hours? A three-hour Raw. You're serving an audience, but you ain't getting no new viewers, and it's slowly eroding. Okay? Okay. That is what's happening with a two-night WrestleMania. They're taking the money. They're selling 110,000 tickets at this point. But how many of you believe that 110,000 people are showing up at WrestleMania? Meaning 110,000 different people. What are we at? We're probably, there's maybe 5,000 people that have bought tickets for the first night that aren't going to night two and vice versa. It's probably, you have gone from attracting 80 to 85,000 people to your show to now attracting 50,000 people to your show. Now, those 50,000 are paying double because they're going to two nights, but you have essentially, at this point, ran off 30,000 people that would have gone otherwise. So, it is exactly like a three-hour raw. You took the short-term money, but you are eroding the fan base. You eroded the viewers with raw, and you're eroding the traveling WrestleMania folks by having a two-night WrestleMania. And the thing is, Brian... With Raw, it's not a fixable problem to me. It's, it's always going to be a problem because three hours is just too long, flat out. That's the way it goes. With WrestleMania, it's an easily fixable thing. If you built to it properly, you actually develop stars. You made it a reason for people to come for that whole weekend and really, you know, got your people revitalized and hyped to be there. They could do that, but they're not. And unfortunately, they're ice cold right now. And I don't see with some of the moves they're making that actually changing. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Review. I got a report from the Vince show. Oh, God. This person here says, Vince essentially says he likes using buzzwords like calling this year's WrestleMania stupendous because he loves branding. You don't say. <laughs> no kidding. Glad we got some breaking news from the Pat McAfee interview with old Vince McMahon. Mm. And Vince will be inducting The Undertaker into the WWE Hall of Fame. So there you go. <laughs> Let's talk about this uh, D uh, Dynamite show here real quick. It's the go-home show. Well, Rampage, I guess, would be the go-home show for the pay-per-view this weekend. God, I hope it's a good speech. I'm sorry. I just thought of this with how Vince, and obviously it's a little different because it's giving a speech at a Hall of Fame as opposed to acting, but as gravelly as his voice is, as many takes as they seem to be using, as uncomfortable as he has been on screen oh, more than he has ever has been his whole life. I wonder what this speech is actually going to be like. I hope it's actually great. I wish they would, again, I don't know if this was Mark Callis's or Mark Calloway's uh, choice. I would doubt that it was. And I wish they would actually give that to the, the, the wrestler that's going in. But fast, it will be a fascinating speech, uh, that, that's for sure. Vince is arguably his greatest creation. All right. Dynamite. So Tony Khan makes an announcement. And he says... We have two of the three men in the very first Ring of Honor main event. Doesn't mention Loki's name. Guy's been canceled. 
So he brings out uh, Brian Danielson and Christopher Daniels. I thought they had a great opening match. Danielson tries the best moonsault ever right into a triangle. Referee stops it. Brian Danielson wins and then cuts a promo about how, you know, in the old Ring of Honor, we'd shake hands after the match. But I'm not in Ring of Honor. I'm in AEW. And he stomps Daniels' head in. Moxley comes out. They had this promo segment where... uh, can't swear on the air, but when it was over, I thought, man, S is going down here at this pay-per-view. I was so excited for this match when this was over. I cannot wait for Brian Danielson and John Moxley on Saturday night. We had the uh, Casino Battle Royal, which is definitely more exciting than a Geek Battle Royal, at least early. But uh, it did fill up to the degree where there was just too many people in the ring. But uh, they shot it. They shot a lot of angles for upcoming feuds. That Dave couldn't remember a single one of. So maybe they shot too many angles. Uh, but uh, it came down to Matt and Nick Jackson against the returning Darius Martin. Guy wasn't winning, but man, they gave that guy everything. He even eliminated Nick Jackson. And then uh, Matt Jackson low blowed him, super kicked him. So the Young Bucks are going to the three way at the pay per view. And uh, hell of a return for old Darius Martin here. So top flight is back together. We had a Jericho promo about the Kingston match on Sunday. Then Santana and Ortiz showed up, and they fist-bumped Jericho. Jericho said, are we good? And they nodded. So there's more to come here. Then we had the CM Punk promo with MJF. And uh, Punk came up, or came out, and uh, it was a very interesting promo because he was not looking for a reaction, and the fans just quietly sat there and listened to every word he said. He said, I used to ask myself if I was a bad guy. And he did say, he did say, I'm not sure this MJF is telling the truth or not, but but I believe some things happened to him. And speaking up took some courage. And he says, I did some horrible things when I was a kid, and uh, I didn't lash out at the world. He said, uh, this MJF has done terrible things to people. And he mentions attacking Dean Malenko, insulting uh, the late Brian Pillman, etc. He says, it's not my fault you're like this. So I want you to come out and I want to talk about it. So MJF comes out, he says nothing. And MJF talks about all these horrible things that he'd done in the past. And he said, I look in the mirror today and I ask myself, I'm a good guy. And uh, the answer I have is I'm trying. And he offers a handshake to MJF, but MJF shoves the hand aside and Gives him the big hug. And Punk is not sure about this, but he ends up giving the guy the hug. And, of course, MJF boots him in the balls. And he stomps a mud hole in him. Spears and Wardlow bring out the ring. MJF punches Punk with the ring. Punk's bleeding everywhere. They hang him with the dog collar. MJF cuts the same promo that CM Punk cut in 2006, I think it was, when he turned heel in Ring of Honor. He's the devil himself. And CM Punk is going to... He's going to learn that on Sunday. And so, at the end of the day, uh, MJF, it was a swerve, but uh, the story they're telling is that this is MJF's backstory. He's not making the story up. This happened to him. And he hates CM Punk because of it. And he lured him in. He tried to play to his sympathy and then screwed him, bloodied him up. And now they're having a dog collar match. I thought it was awesome. I don't know about the rest of you. Yes, Mike? Who was the person that didn't think this was awesome? I need to find that person, slap that person a few times, just have them turn on something else on their television because they will never love professional wrestling. Great pro wrestling, perfect build in a short period of time, realistically. And I know they played the corners on this for quite some time, you know, with Punk coming in, but proof that this can be done in any promotion. Uh, again, if you have the right people in place and you treat things seriously, you give it some layers. This has been the best, I would argue, this is the best thing that AEW has ever done. I, I would I would actually go as far, and we'll see what the final match is. They've done a lot of great stuff. The build for this, the performances in this, the levels, how they have built it up, and all the gravity they've given to it. I would argue that this is the best thing that AEW has done thus far. What I would recommend, Mike, is you... Don't sneak into your own DMs today. 
Thunder Rose and Mercedes Martinez beat Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter. This match was weird. It was clunky. And uh, it didn't look like it fell apart, but it certainly was not a smooth match. And Thunder Rosa pinned Britt Baker. And uh, you know how things go. She pinned Britt Baker, and now I don't think she's winning on Sunday. I guess we'll see. Anything can happen. But uh, that was that. Then we had Wardlow destroying Cesar Bononi. And uh, just your usual. Just squash the guy. And uh, this leads to Rampage Friday. Sammy... Darby and Andrade in a three-way for the TNT title. Even though Andrade just lost, he snuck his way into the TNT title DMs. Keith Lee in action. Serena Deep five-minute challenge and uh, Christian Cage versus Ethan Page. Winner goes into the face of the Revolution ladder match. Revolution has Statlander and Layla Hirsch and Hook versus QT Marshall in the buy-in. CM Punk versus MGF Dog Collar. Danielson versus Moxley. Sting, Darby, and Sammy versus Matt Hardy, Andrade, and Isaiah Cassidy in a tornado match. Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa for the women's title. Face of the Revolution ladder match. Keith Lee, Ward, Lawrence, Cassidy, Ricky Starks, Powerhouse Hobbs, and either Christian or Ethan Page. Jericho versus Eddie Kingston, Jade Cargill, Ty Conti for the TBS title. By the way, you'll have to wait till the Brian Vinny show tonight so I can talk about Jade's awesome promo on the show last night. She, I think, gave MJF and Punk a run for their money in that promo. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus the Young Bucks and Red Dragon. And Hangman Page versus Adam Cole for the AEW title. And that led us to the main event. Adam Cole, Red Dragon versus Hangman Page and the Dark Order. Uh, at first, Adam Cole didn't want anything to do with, him, uh, with uh, Hangman Page. Hangman Page finally lured him in. They had the big brawl. Then we had the blind tag to Alex Reynolds. Hangman was taken out. And Cole uh, hit Reynolds with the uh, super kick and the boom, as they call it, and pinned him. And afterwards, the heels just beat down Hangman. They taped him to the ropes. They destroyed his friends right in front of him. Adam Cole super kicked him in the ropes, hit him with the belt. So a very uh, heavy heat angle leading into the pay-per-view. Not heavy heat enough that I believe Adam Cole has any chance of beating Hangman Page. But uh, they did the heavy heat angle to go off the air. And uh, overall, I thought a very, very good episode, very good go home show of Dynamite. They had to do something. <laughs> they had to do something. They nothing. They, they, how Adam? Obviously, you would redo Adam Cole. I think you would redo how you debuted Andrade. I think you. Would, I think there have been, you know, a couple of times where they've they've slipped. For as great as some other things are, there there have been some slips, and I think Adam Cole unfortunately has been a little bit of a, a miss here luckily for them they have such big matches that don't have anything to do with the world title that even though unfortunately it's the world title match so you don't want to actually say this but it can be a little lower down on the card and it can be a lower a little lower down in everybody's minds on this show because you have so much good other stuff but I hope they got something for, you know, I don't know what they have next for Hangman Page. You know, Kenny Omega's not ready to come back yet. I don't know who it's going to be. Uh, and I guess in theory you could continue on to do Adam Cole as well too. But Hangman Page, I think, would needs a banger of a feud. And I, I don't know what the deal is with, with Adam Cole, you know, right now. Uh, FTR and Fish and O'Reilly because of what took place on the floor in that tag after the tag battle royal. They look like they could be involved with each other. Uh, and, and Cole, I'll say this, he needs something strong and he needs something that people will be able to sink their teeth into because this has been a slip, I, I think, uh, ultimately how it's gone. And I haven't been, frankly, you know, Jay, Jay White, then the little bit they've used him and, and kind of, they've kind of done the same sort of thing. And I just, they have not maximized those guys, I, I think, in the best way they could. Well, we got another uh, note here from uh, from the Vince McMahon interview. This is the one that I'm sure is going to get the most uh, the most talk over the next couple of days. Vince McMahon just called all of the released WWE talent during the pandemic dead weight. Wow, dead weight. Whew. He's doing the Vince. He knows, he knows how to get people talking. Exactly. That's what this is. And that's, look, as a separate but equal thing because he's a promoter, Tony Khan and that announcement that he made, and he's had some 
misses. I don't want to say misses, but he's had some things that he's built up that maybe didn't need to be built up in the way that they in the way that they were. But what do you expect? He's a promoter. And you can see how excited he is. You saw it again at the beginning of the show yesterday. And promoters are full of it. They always inflate everything. But how much can they deliver? And Bob Arum, Don King, Vince McMahon, Tony Khan, all of them. I mean, I would, you want Tony Khan to do this stuff. And, you know, he, he's at least paying some of his stuff off. Vince McMahon, I guess, is also paying some of his stuff off. It's just... And seemingly in some of the worst ways. But then again, look, if you're a WWE fan and you're a stand-up for WWE person, everything he's saying is the gospel and they can all bow to him. All right, everybody. Let's see what we got in the text message bin. 425-780-7566 is the number. I uh, finished, uh, by the way, the NXT 2.0 show yesterday. And uh, I don't think there was really anything that I... It was uh, Harlan. Yeah, I was a Harlan guy. Von Wagner. So hey, we'll Rico, say this. I will, Rico joins up. I'll say this about Von Wagner and uh, Andre Chase, though, is I just watched uh, Von Wagner's father. We'll do we'll do a full review on uh, Tuesday. I watched the Beverly Brothers versus uh, uh, Money Inc., which when you think about it, it should be like a really good match. It was on Raw. Pro. Brutal. Uh, this, yeah. this match was way better than that match. Which, by the way... For those of you that are subscribers to WrestlingObserver.com, the main site, WrestlingObserver.com, or the video site, Video.F4WOnline.com, if you're not a subscriber, sign up now, because Tuesday is going to be a very special edition of the Brian and Vinny Show. It will be our Ode to Rob Bartlett episode. It is Raw 13 that we'll be reviewing. Rob Bartlett's final Raw and we will be celebrating with a poetry contest, a song contest, and then we will review Raw 13, the final Raw show with Rob Bartlett. Oh, to Rob Bartlett edition of the Brian and Vinny Show on Tuesday. Don't miss it. Wrestling Observer Live. By the way, I hate to, uh, I hate to always do this because, you know, like maybe 50% of the time it doesn't turn out this way, but uh, it appears Trent is okay. If you watch the uh, Battle Royal, he got sent outside, and he's on the apron, and he reaches back and grabs the rope, and then immediately lets go and grabs his bicep and, and gets eliminated. And I thought, oh, man, this poor guy better not have torn his biceps. And uh, he did hurt his arm, but uh, apparently today he felt it had just been tweaked and that he didn't tear his biceps. So, whew. guy doesn't need to be hurt anymore, this poor mm. dude. Especially mm-hmm. something like, especially in a Battle Royal. Really? Most dangerous match out there. Most annoying match, for sure. Well, the, the irony is they used to bill it as the most dangerous match ever, but it's not. But getting hurt in a battle royal is just the worst. <laughs> I mean, at least a casino battle royal is like a high-end battle royal, so I guess it wouldn't be, you know, not like just your average, oh, we're going to do a geek battle royal at the beginning of the show. The winner gets to challenge uh, Tim Flowers for the title in the main event. You, I couldn't get out of that match fast enough. Did you guys ever do the pile-on spot to anybody? And He's the guy like, roars, and they all go flying? Well, well, no, no. The one young buck in there, you just shove under there, and it's literally, you don't do that spot. It's just 19 other guys laying on, crushing them, playing Big Brother in them. No, never did that <laughs> one. But I was out too early. I literally could not get out of Battle Royals fast enough. I don't even think I ever won a Battle Royal ever. It's so like, if I'm not going to win, what am I doing in here? Said, did you just pair off with the oldest, crustiest yes, dude that and, also thought the same way? It was and either just like, me and Buddy or me and Ed Moretti. Go right to the corner. He'd put me in a headlock. <laughs> we'd stand in the corner while everyone else did stupid stuff. And then we'd eliminate each other. And that was it. Done. <laughs> get me out of this thing. And get me out of this show. I want to thank Mike, as always, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. Talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.